welcome back to the channel. I'm Odi J and we are locked in. This is the recap for episode six, Power Book 2 Ghost, the second half of the season finale. Now, this episode was giving us everything that we needed and we wanted that action, but we know we only have a certain amount of episodes, four left to condense all of this and make it make sense. And Tariq, it's been four years of this spinoff you should have been taking at least one or two boxing lessons because they still whooping on Tariq. Now, before we jump into this and we break down this episode six, if you like power content, breakdowns, theories, and predictions, you like a suspect board like that, then you're at the right spot. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers, so we need about 250. So if you like this content, help a brother out so we can reach that milestone. So let's go ahead and jump into it. This is a recap for episode six, Power Book Two, Ghost. Right before the break, we seen Don Carter get Monet and Drew to start working for him. Now Drew is following around Don Carter to try to figure out any information about who this cop is. While he's doing surveillance, we see Don Carter harassing some corner boy trying to get his 35% cut. Drew gets a text message from Monet asking, what do you see? And he takes his eye off of Don Carter but this turns out to be a huge mistake because Don Carter goes from whooping the corner boy's tail and getting his cut to disappearing and popping up in Drew's rearview mirror. So now he knows that Drew is following him and he sent a text message to Drew telling him, stop following me. So you know they had Drew spooked and Drew's gotta get the hell up out of here because Don Carter ain't playing around. Monet and Diana are out living the regular up at east side finally got a piece of the pie life they're shopping for baby clothes they're looking for better alternatives how they can navigate through life with a grandbaby on the way for monet a newborn for diana maybe turning kane's old room into a nursery so the baby can have a room but diana doesn't want that life diana wants to go to school and she's been looking at options of having a baby on campus so along with Having all the stress of school, being in the dope game, Diana wants to raise her baby on the college campus to finish her degree. You remember the conversation she had with Busandria. So she really wants to continue her education. Noma ends up pulling up on Tariq and Braden while they're on the campus. Tariq and Braden are trying to find their next move. And Noma's like, you guys, you know what? You think you're slick selling behind my back. That wasn't part of our stipulation. Now Tariq and Braden are like, well, we sorry you had to find out that way, but we got to make some money too. And also, you need to calm down, Noma, because if you keep talking to us, we'll go and tell Anya that you're actually moving dope. Because Anya doesn't know that Noma killed her father and Noma doesn't run a regular enterprise. Noma actually runs a whole drug operation. So Tariq and Braden are using a little bit of blackmail and trying to buy some time to get Noma off their back. And even Kane sees through the BS. He knows that Tariq and Braden are buying time, but they're going behind Noma's back. The reason Noma can't really make any moves at this point is because she's vulnerable. She don't know who robbed the stash. She doesn't know who she can really work with. And Kane is out here accommodating enemies also. Yeah, I said accommodating because we know that Zion is basically just following him around the city, trying to figure out how can I get even with you after you whooped on me. But Noma, she's like, Kane, calm your tail down. We need to go handle this business and get these contracts. Drew storms over to the house after Diana and Monet get back from baby shopping. And he's like, listen, y'all out here BSing. Don Carter knows I'm following them. Diana, go get, get out of here. Monet's like, well, do you have any information? He's like, I couldn't get any. Did you not hear me, Ma? Don Carter knew I was following him. He's seen me taking pictures. So right now, this is bad because if Don Carter knows they're watching him, then he's gonna have to turn up the pressure on them to get them off their tail and to go make him some money in the streets. Speaking of the devil, Don Carter ends up showing up in the house. And when Don shows up, he's looking around like, where's my cut, Monet? And Monet's like, that's what you're here for? He said, yeah, because I've been trying to call you and you've been sending me straight to voicemail. So he ends up pulling a gun on Diana and saying, where'd you get that product from? And Monet's like, I don't know, I don't know. We just, uh, we came up on it because she stole it from Noma, but she doesn't want to give up Noma's name to Don Carter. So she's like, well, look, 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 we, we, we can work something out. We can figure this out. 
and Don Carter's like, nah, that doesn't sound good enough for me. So what they do, they end up arresting Drew, using Drew as collateral, and basically saying, we can use Drew to do something else for us behind the prison walls. Noma and Kane are still trying to get these contracts. Well, Noma specifically, because she needs to be able to stay over here. So this back door that they got through Davis with Wiley Adams, they're paying him a little money so he can guarantee these contracts. You know, those kickbacks, they work in mysterious ways. But while they're sitting here, things look like it's going good. But out of nowhere, a truck ends up pulling up. And this SUV, it gets to dumping. And it turns out that it's Zion. Zion has had his eye on Kane ever since he got whooped in the warehouse. Well, he pulls up in the Jeep with the top back and he gets to letting loose. Wiley gets shot in the back a couple of times. Kane and Noma are behind the table. Kane gets to shooting back after the truck is two blocks down the street. But Noma being the street smart that she is, she sees the money that she gave to Wiley. She picks that money up, well, tells Kane to grab it and they get the heck up out of there. They locked Drew up for a reason. That's because Don Carter got a text saying that Zay, the person that went out with Drew and Monet to rob Noma, well, he got shot and he's still alive and he's in the infirmary. So Nico comes in here and he gives Drew a burner phone and tells him you got 24 hours to get into the infirmary and to finish the business on Zay. Unalive him, do what you gotta do. Now Drew, he ain't built for this. So he has to figure it out on the fly how he's gonna get in the infirmary and make this happen because his family is in danger. After the shooting, Kane and Noma get back and they try to gather their thoughts. Now Noma's thinking since Zion did this shooting, he has to be the person that robbed them last night. And Kane is like, oh, don't worry about it. I'll get him. And plus, we're gonna still try to get you those contracts. Now I don't know how they're gonna do it because Davis set this contract up and well, Wiley's gone. Effie ends up showing up. And now Noma is telling Effie, I need you to work your magic with the Russians. We need to be able to get them to buy some product from us because right now we're hurting after being robbed. Effie, she's a kind of hesitant, but at the end of the day, you have to do what Noma tells you to or it's gonna be trouble. Tariq's been laid up with Anya because now he has to put another plan in motion. We already seen Noma pressing him and Brayden, so he has to get closer and closer to Anya to get information about Noma. Now Anya, she's falling for it because she doesn't know what Tariq is actually into. So Tariq convinces her to tell him about her family. Her dad has some oil money. They've been living in the States ever since he was unalive. Thanks to Noma, but she doesn't know that. Her mom runs a, a huge conglomerate and is legit. So Tariq is like, dang, that's nice. So do you guys visit any place? She's like, yeah, we got a couple of different places we go and visit. Anya doesn't even know. She's giving information to Tariq that could potentially end her mother's life. Crooked cop Felicia has been running around the city terrorizing people. She's been hanging around Don Carter too much. People have been putting in complaints about her. You know this is going to happen. Yeah, I got hit by her the other day. She took her boot off and slapped me across the face. She threw me on the hood of a car. And well, now her supervisor is saying we need to have a conversation. Come on in. Well, when this stressor kicks in, you're a crooked cop. There's no other way to go. She takes a hit of that blow. And she's like, well, let me try to fix this situation on my own, which this is only going to make it worse. Felicia goes straight to Diana's house, grabs a glass of water. is like, listen, my bad. Let's start all over. Remember, she's high right now. She's telling Diana, man, I made some mistakes, but let's go ahead and put that behind us. And since Monet ain't here, I need you to do something. And Diana's like, do something. I don't I don't do something. I just go to school. I'm a college student. She said, nah, that's not what we trying to hear. I need you to go ahead and unalive Zion for me. You know how to pull that trigger, don't you? You're a Tejada. And Diana's like, what? That's not what I do. She said, well, this is what you're about to do. Felicia, she's all over the place. But hey, sometimes when you caught up in the game, this is how it is. Diana and Tariq are trying to figure out how they're going to make this family life work. Well, Effie comes up here and she sees Diana throwing up. And the rumor around the campus is that Diana is probably pregnant. So Effie goes over and she's talking to Tariq about it. And Tariq is getting defensive. Mind your business, Effie. So Effie puts two and two together and figures, oh, wait, the baby is yours. Oh, then Effie gets bold. And she tells Diana to her face that I've been telling Tariq that you should probably get an abortion because anyone can make a baby. What are y'all going to do? Go play house? 
So now Diana and Effie are beefing because Effie is jealous that Tariq ain't with her and that Diana has Tariq's seed. Tariq hears all of this and he has to go talk to Davis because Davis is the only adult on his side that he can actually listen to, even though Davis doesn't have his license. But he starts talking about Zion and Zion is racking up enemies. Now, they can use this as leverage because as of right now, Noma thinks that Zion is the one that robbed her. So if they can take out Zion for Noma, this will get them a connect, get them some product in their pocket so Tariq and Davis can make some money. And these two together, it's like Batman and Robin. Kane goes and meet up with this guy named Scoop. And the reason he's meeting up with Scoop is because he knows where Zion is. But he's playing tough. And Kane is like, hey, bro, we got a problem? He's like, nah, but why would I tell you where Zion is? He's like, hey, man, tell me where he is. And Kane gets the whooping on him. Now, the reason Scoop is acting like this is because his brother is Zay, the one that got locked up that Drew needs to unalive. And he's saying, man, my brother got locked up. He's in the infirmary. I thought y'all was going to look out for him. So now this has Kane wondering, wait a minute. I thought Zion robbed Noma, but you're saying your brother went on a mission and got locked up? Hmm. So Kane is piecing stuff together himself. Drew decides he needs to come up with a plan. 24 hours is on the clock. How can I get into the infirmary? Well, you remember Roman? They're in here and they're like, man, I got Davis on my side. I can get out of jail. Got to get out of jail free card. So before all of this happens, Drew goes over there and punches him. He incites a riot. The cops come in, the guards, they start whooping on Drew and they beat him badly. But this is gonna get Drew into the infirmary because he has to finish the deal with Zay. Because if not, then that means Diana and Monet, they're gonna be off. I don't know how, but they're gonna be off. Drew makes it into the infirmary. He sneaks down the hall. His gut still hurting, his back still hurting, his feet, his neck, my neck and my back. He makes it down to Zay's room. Now Zay is in here hurt. What does he do? He go ahead and put his hand over his mouth, suffocates him, takes him out the game. It's eat or get ate and it's a dog eat dog world. And then we know every dog has his day. Drew completes the mission. Noma told Effie to go talk to the Russians, work her magic. Well, she gets over there and things look like they're going according to plan. She got a bag of money. The Russians only trust Effie and things are looking up. So we're like, all right, bet Effie's making it happen. But this is the power universe and we know nothing goes this smooth. While they're having this, we hear somebody kicking a door and then gunshots go off and all hell breaks loose over at the Russian restaurant. I'm talking shooting everywhere. Don Carter come in here, Kamal Tate, everyone, but, but, but. Well, bottom, he ends up making an escape out of here. Effie, she tries to get out of there with the money. And then Kamal Tate sees Nico being a dirty cop and taking the money away from one of the Russians before he leaves and gets on the phone call with Drew. So Kamal Tate is like, what the hell is going on? This task force, they aren't as clean as I thought they were. Kane comes over to talk to Monet and ask a few questions. What do you got going on? What do you know about that robbery? Why is Zay's brother Scoop going at me like this? Because they believe that you had his brother Zay set up and now he's in jail and the blame is on Zion. She's like, well, I didn't have nothing to do with that, Kane. And Kane's looking at her like, yeah, okay, Monet. I'm supposed to believe that. But Monet, she got a good poker face and Kane ends up leaving. But I know Monet's like, man, this dude, He's getting closer and closer, but she had to tell him before he leaves, whatever, little nigga, you don't know what you talk about. Tariq ended up making a deal with Noma that they were going to take out Zion. And if they do this, then Noma will be their supplier. Well, he goes and gets Braden from the campus and Braden is high as you know what. He gets him like tech Zion. But when they get over there, Zion ain't playing around. He's in the safe house that Don Carter put him in. And well, when he sees Braden at the door, he starts to whoop on him and Brayden. Well, they end up fighting back after taking a good old ass whooping. And then we see Tariq stand over Zion and go ahead and unalive him. Immediately after that, he calls up Diana. She's like, I was worried, Tariq. I didn't hear from you. He said, you know, I'll do anything for you and the baby. So he took out Zion because 
Felicia told Diana to do it or it was going to be problems. So she went to her baby daddy and he handled the situation like a real G supposed to. But now they got to meet up and talk in person. Kane gets a text message from Davis. The Zion situation is taken care of. Tell Noma we need that work. Now, when he gets to Noma's spot, Noma tells him, well, the Russians, they got raided by Don Carter's task force. And the first thing Kane says, was Effie there? Because he's still in love. And Noma, she goes in on him talking about, oh, that's so cute. He's like, man, she's a soldier. You're supposed to worry about it. But you can see that Noma is starting to get aggravated with Kane and how he's moving. She wants to be with a real man, someone like Davis McLean, someone that would get the job taken care of. Now, the task force, they're piecing stuff together also, but they got to cover their tracks. We know that Felicia has been messing up and Diana was supposed to be the one to take out Zion. It turns out in that safe house that Zion was at, where Felicia and Don Carter were talking to him earlier, there's cameras. So she has footage that Tariq and Brayden actually unalived Zion when she told Diana to go and do it. And Diana might be the one putting in these complaints. Back in the dorms, Effie, she's really going through it. She was just clowning Tariq and Diana about leaving the game and going off and pretending to play house. And now she's sitting here crying, shedding thug tears, telling Kane, I don't think I could do it anymore, Kane. I just don't want to be in the game anymore. All of this is reality of what happens when you're in a dope game. When people pull them tools on you, when there's bullets flying everywhere, they don't have a name. Well, it can get ugly out there. And Kane, we know he's supportive of Effie. Even though she still loves Tariq, he will do anything at the drop of a dime for Effie Morales. But she wants out the game and she wants Tariq in her life. Felicia goes out to find Diana and that's because Diana was supposed to unalive Zion. We needed this taken care of how we had it planned accordingly because we don't want fingers pointing back to us. So Diana gets caught up with Felicia and Felicia, well, after getting slapped by Diana, she unleashes the vicious 2006 A-Town stomp on Diana, threw her into the trash. Oh, I'm fighting back the tears right now telling you guys this. Five, six stomps to the stomach, a punch to the face. Felicia was not playing around with Diana and it doesn't look like it's good for Diana and the baby because all the baby wanted was some cookies. Kamal Tate seen Nico stealing money from the raid at the Russian spot. He ends up calling up Don Carter and telling him, listen, I were meeting here at the docks because I couldn't tell anyone about this, but some members in your organization, they're a little dirty. They're stealing money. I checked the evidence. They didn't even process the money. I don't know what's going on. Now, Don Carter has never been a fan of Kamal Tate. And well, now that he sees that Kamal is really on the scene like this, he pulls out his gun and he lays Kamal down because closed mouths don't talk. And Don Carter, he's trying to feed the streets and get his re-up money. R.I.P. Kamal. And the last thing we see is Tariq leaving the cookie store, calling Diana, wondering where she's at, only to hear her phone ringing just around the corner. When he gets there, all you can smell is trash, leftover food, old fish, and then you see a body and Diana's laying there, phone just to ring it. And instead of Tariq calling the police, dialing 911 himself, he screams out, help, help, somebody, please help. But it's the middle of the night and we know folks ain't helping anybody in the middle of the night yelling out help. All right, there you go to recap for episode six. Let me know what you think about this episode. Is Diana going to be able to recover from this? And will the baby end up healthy? Or will the baby end up like Zeke? Or will the baby just not make it? Let me know what you think. And is Don Carter one of the coolest or dirtiest cops that we've seen in the Power Universe? Let me know what you think. This is the recap of episode six. I'm Old IJ. We're on that road to 50,000 subscribers. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notification bell. Hit that like button if you like this kind of content. Thanks for watching. I'm out.